Okay. Okay. Yeah, there you go. That's our friends Pearl Jam coming at you live. I don't know if you caught any of those lyrics, but it sure was uh, Toronto's Toronto's losers, baby. Shohei Otani, and he did say Otani in the version. Wow. Heard there. Yeah. Okay. There Thanks, Andy. I didn't Damn. catch any of the lyrics. Couldn't make them out. Yeah, you know, um, Pearl Jam, you know, it's a, it's a Marble Mouth situation. Eddie Vedder, you know, he's getting a little older. You know, he's he's not enunciating like he used to. But we called sure. him in for this, and he did us a big fave. Um, thanks so much, Eddie. I uh, I, di- I have seen Pearl Jam live. Uh, really? And he, he brought out Neil Young. It's pretty cool. Like out of his pocket. Yep. Here he is. Yeah, yeah. Neil <laughs> little Young, Neil Young. Uh, Neil Young was hiding under the stage. Um, <laughs> and they did a very long but cool guitar riff. Yeah. Um, so just one riff, out. eh? Just one dee, riff. Dee, 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 dee. Yep, oh, yeah, yeah. But it was long. Uh, <laughs> yeah, super long. Twenty minutes a, long. No, it was a day long. Oh, um, <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah. You got it. You got him on a good night then. Get in this book, baby. Um, <laughs> shout out for old Jam Neil Young. Uh, shout friends out. Of the show. Yep. Friends of the show. Uh, friends, friends of the, of the show. show. Yeah, always. <laughs> uh, this is the Confederacy of Dunks. I'm your host, Freddie Revis, uh, and uh, with my producer and co-host. Andy Hull, uh, and very special guest, uh, accomplished, incredible actor, and uh, you know basketball savant as well, uh, Matthew Brown. What's up? How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Appreciate you. Thanks for the nice intro. Uh, idiot savant, maybe, but we'll see by the end of the show. Sure. Hey, <laughs> any, any savant. I'll take any savant. Um, yeah, uh, I think uh, you know we'll, we'll start with Raptors, uh, move on to some NBA, and then, and then we'll mess around. Uh, play a little casting game, mm-hmm. but uh, this this podcast is is going to be coming out uh, on the thirteenth. Um, so we are fresh off a uh, another loss, uh, another Raptors loss to the New York Knicks. Uh, the Raptors are on a four game losing streak. The Raptors are the only team to not have a single win against their division. Wow. I think, you know, the, the Darko honeymoon has been over for a bit mm. and um, that's not to say that, you know, he won't grow, but I think Raptors fans are rightfully upset, frustrated. Rumors are starting to get louder. I'm just going to ask you very plainly, uh, Matthew, how bad is this Raptor season going to get? If you had asked me this at the beginning of the season, I would have been very optimistic. I've been loudly optimistic on yeah, many of the platforms that I've been on. I am much le- less optimistic now. I think it's going to get pretty bad. Um, considering that we still have those three expiring contracts sitting there and we're going to have to make some moves, but then you're going to have to make the decision of if you move one of, or two of three or all three of Pascal, Gary and OG, um, what moves make you good enough to compete and what moves make you bad enough to be bottom six so you can keep that pick. And I'm not quite convinced that we're going to get either good value or, a good enough return to do either of those things, right? Like I'm not convinced that we can get bad enough to just really tank this entire season, get our top six pick back because I believe it's protected one through six, right? It's not one through eight. Yeah. So getting that pick back or getting good enough where we can be in the position to be a six, seven, eight seed. And even if we're seven, eight again, then we're back in the play in like, Mm -hmm none of those really feel like good options. So I think it's going to get pretty bad and it sucks because we've gone through a really good era of Raptors basketball, a really great 10 years of 
having teams that we could watch and that we could root for, even if we, you know, we get LeBron toed when we go into the playoffs as if everyone mm-hmm. didn't lose to LeBron in that era, right? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody in the East lost to LeBron, but we were there every year and we're now facing not having any of that. And it kind of sucks right now. I think it's going to get pretty bad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, re- I really agree. fair. Got to agree. Me- I mean, I agree too. Um, yeah. Andy, do you want to jump in? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, I, like I say, and I think this is just, just, just looking at where you know where we are in terms of not just standings in the league, but like rating, offensive rating, stuff like that. Like we're down in the lower third of the league, and I don't think any of us, even a week ago, were like we're a bottom, bottom third team in the NBA you know we're, we're probably in the middle there somewhere we're 500 team you know they, they, trending you know at times trending upward times trending mm-hmm. downward currently trending down pretty hard and uh <laughs> <laughs> these uh currently like, spiraling out of control uh, spiraling out of control and everyone's really freaking out and Toronto's <laughs> in a really bad place sports wise right now you know yeah. we are in a rough spot we heard it from Pearl Jim uh we heard it we heard it so like yeah I think I think you're right uh, uh Matthew I think like probably getting worse before it gets better unfortunately and it while here's the thing uh beginning of the season I think the Raptors were like the Ozmakers had them at like 36 or 38 wins or something like that on the yep. season and I remember listening to the radio and everyone's like what are you talking about like this is a four, easily a 40 win team like we're gonna be higher than that even probably 40 you know two three whatever um and now I'm like they were right they were right the whole time <laughs> it's like the time when the Toronto Maple Leafs got Eric Lindros and everyone was like this guy's gonna score two goals and, and we were like he's on pace to score 50 and then he certainly did score exactly like whatever it was eight goals or something it's like they somehow knew and they, they knew what this Raptor team as well and they saw it so it's almost as if they're experts in their field <laughs> Those Vegas bastards. Bastards. Um, yeah, they got you me know. Again, I, uh, I, I, I also agree, right? So, I think there's so there's so much that can happen with this team, and um, part of my analysis of this team in the, in the past little while, uh, and by a little while, I mean a couple of years, is that um, you know, post sort of post like kind of Tampa, let's say. Uh, I I don't really think there's been a Band-Aid option for this team. Um, mm. I don't really think that, you know, in, in Scotty's first year, you were able to sort of say, this is exactly what I expect of Scotty. And I think even the, you know, the Scotty stands, the people who are really, you know, super high on him, <coughs> I don't even think they could say that, well, year three, he's going to make like like a historic level jump from three. So there's just been so much that's been unpredictable about this team. And I think the fan frustration is real and fair when, when you look at the things that are predictable, like spacing, right? So that is, that is sort of driven fans to this point of like, I am, I'm deeply frustrated watching the same broken product. And um, yeah, it's a, uh, you know, I think it, it it has to get worse before it gets better. But um, you know, as you were talking, Matthew, I was just looking at, you know, for the for the people who are really sort of furious and and focused on the Purtle trade um, as being this kind of you know fruitless endeavor, this is their worst uh, nightmare playing out, right? So uh, mm-hmm. currently, the Raptors uh, owe their pick to San Antonio, and that pick is ninth overall. Yikes. Um, and I'm obviously we don't know the the players, but uh, Wuga Poplar is the is the name slated there. He's playing in Miami right now. He's a shooting guard. Uh, great name. Um, but uh, yeah, so this is a bad case scenario. If that pick was you know slated around like 1920, you're kind of like, well, we got Pirtle right for 20 million dollars. You know, he's a he's a good center. He has limitations. Blah blah blah. But we have this guy that's a, you know, a good, decent, you know, starter level player. And, you know, we gave up a pick that, you know, the odds are that, you know, a pick that's higher than 18 uh, is going to have a tough time cracking an NBA roster. That's just sort of the stats on that. Uh, It's different for a guy that's in the top 10. 
So I'm I'm with you. I think it's going to get worse before it gets better. I think the returns on the players, um, we'll have to see how it plays out, right? You know, and mm-hmm. and I think the the patience of this team, the patience of the uh, fan base, the the patience of of Darko, all these things are being tested and we're sort of in this stretch similar to last year, right? We had those back-to-back losses to Orlando and the team kind of broke and then sort of salvaged a 500 season. But it seems like that's not on the table for this year. Like salvaging a 500 season is not, is not something that's going to be tenable for anybody with, with, Mm -hmm. with, you know, the main theme of the, of these three unrestricted free agents. Exactly that, right? Given given the uh, the free agents that are sitting there, it was easier to be patient last year and just sit and see where, where things go. And that's also just part of the frustration is for me when I look at the team and I say, suppose we trade two of those three and we lose, like, I think OG is one of the reasons why our, our defense is even um, average. <laughs> like, when it's great, it's great because of him. And when it's horrible, it's average because of him. It would be, like, right. way worse without him. So yeah, watching we're, we're him go to another team. right now, by the way. Right. So watching him go to another team and watching, let's just say him in, let's say, let's say him in Pascal go somewhere else. And now you're left with Gary, whatever we get back from that. And it somehow turns into scotty gets more room there's now spacing the raptors are decent but because of the bad start and because of everything that's there we're still in the same position we were last year i don't think fans are going to be super happy with what that looks like unless you are unless you find a shooting revelation somewhere else or from within right that when when more spacing opens up because you get rid of some guys that all of a sudden malachi flynn turns into um drew league flynn and he starts hitting like threes from left, right, and center. But the the notion that that can happen seems pretty far right now. And I got to trust, which has always been my thing, to trust management to recognize the situation on the table, to trust Messiah and Bobby and be like, okay, last year we gave you the pass to let this thing go and see where it ended up. This year, I think you got to recognize we don't have time and make some kind of move so I can see what that looks like. Right. Yeah. This is now where it's y'all got to earn your money now. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Well well said. Right. You know, and I think, you know, you have a lot of frustrated fans who, um, I, I've always felt like our, they, they, they have this like unfair, uh, contextualization of the situation, which is I'm going to ignore everything, um, that led to the championship. And I'm going to focus on only, like after we won a championship, this is how I rate Masai, which is, you know, you know, I think is sort of, I'll just say it, a garbage take and a weird way to look at a team. But uh, I do think that, you know, if you're, if you're looking at sort of the post Tampa scenario, um, you're looking at a team that overachieved a team that middled and now a team that's really less than the sum of its parts. And I think that, you know, obviously there's a virtue to patience, but, uh, we see, we're we really, really seeing its limitations and, and, and testing that patient boundary. And I think you, you don't, sure, there's lineup data, but you don't need a lot more data on not having shooters. Like, you just don't need mm-hmm. that. You know that that's the way the league goes. Um, you know, I was saying to a friend recently, you know, hypothetically, right, the Raptors are awesome on defense um, and bad on offense. Um, the Pacers... <coughs> are one of the worst defensive teams in the NBA, but they're the best offensive team and they're having a great season. And I think that that to me is a good sort of example of we're just in this era of basketball, basketball where offense matters a lot more than defense. And sure you can zig while everybody zags, but it's kind of blowing up in everyone and you know, Messiah and Bobby's face. Yeah. You, you need to offset your weaknesses. Obviously like the Raptors have this kind of, shiny at times defense but really middle the truly middle of the road if you're looking at the entire nba and then you've got an offensive rating that's even lower so it's like well something you need to score yeah like you know so and we we scored last night against the knicks right yeah and we couldn't stop anybody so exactly at key spots key stops at key times in the game which is just things that that's been the most infuriating thing because it's a constant it's like 
okay, you get it to two, you you got to get a bucket, and then it's a turnover. Or mm-hmm. last night there was one where it was like fast break. We're um, bringing up court. Somebody drives directly to the bucket, but the other two players stand right beside them equals yeah, a turnover because no one goes to the three because no one's trusted to shoot the three. And then New York comes back down almost the same scenario and somebody pops a three. Time I remember. Out. Yeah, it was it was Barrett who hit the three. I think I, I, and then I think the fast break. I'm not sure if it was Malachi, but it was um, definitely pass. Uh, sorry, definitely um, uh, uh, Precious and Boucher. Yeah. And, yeah, I and think both it was those the, three players. And then no one felt comfortable finishing and they tried sort of like an ugly interior pass and it was a uh, not good turnover. Like it would have been better even if they just held the ball and yeah. just sort of <laughs> set up. Uh, and then of course it goes the other end for a three and yeah, you could just, it was, it was one of those sort of uh, those, those uh, commentator moments where it's, it's uh, you know, Jack's like, you know, they lose two and they get three. That's a five point swing sort of thing. And yeah, you could feel there's a big momentum play, right? Hmm. Um, okay. Let's, uh, let's sort of move on to uh, some more Raptors stuff. Um, and I think this is, uh, this is sort of where, I, you know, a lot of fans have been for a long time. Um, and I think I referenced the lineup data and with this team, you can see, you could see the three-headed monster if there was a supporting cast. Mm-hmm. Now, you know, as you said, Matthew, times time might be up, and we might not be able to actually see this. But let's explore a hypothetical here, right? So, you know, in a world uh, where they were able to retain these players, um, which is seeming very unlikely, but in a world where they were, uh, you have OG, Pascal, Scotty. You know, these three two-way. Uh, big wings. We know Pirtle and Schroeder. Uh, I think we have a lot of data here that that the five sum is really not working, right? Mm-hmm. They, they, you know, obviously we're coming off that New York game, but a rough start again. But then, you know, even as Darko brings them all back in, they kind of lose momentum, right? The momentum that the that the Raptors had gained uh, was lost by those five players playing together. So let's imagine anywhere in the league um, who are, you know, starter level players. Cause right. Cause it's easy to say, well, you know, if you had Halliburton and Jokic, I think it would be great. It's like, okay, well, yeah, that'd be nice. Uh, but <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's say, let's say starter level players. Um, and yeah, I'll go to you first, Matthew. Who are you going to replace Schroeder with? Who are you going to replace uh, Pirtle with to fit this team? Uh, I went actually a little bit more, um, I, in my initial, uh, and digging for this, I went a little bit more crazy as if we were losing one of them and one for the big three. However, I will give you one person that I've definitely circled that I would love to add to this team. And I've been told or from the media that he's untouchable and, and it wouldn't require losing one of these three or it might not, which is Caruso. Caruso, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I would love, you know, the that line from um that movie Kick Ass. He's like, God, I wish I had a son like you. Right when he's about to, <laughs> I watch Caruso and I'm like, oh man, oh I wish. Why? Because it's just I feel like there's a, a lack of. It's not necessarily a lack of leadership, but it's that calming, settle down energy that i think the raptors lose in key moments and he is that type of player to have that while also bringing a lot of energy a lot of great basketball mind like that's a player that i would add that to this trio and i think you you got you got a little something though yeah. i don't think the the um chicago bulls are, are giving him up i've been told yeah I, yeah i mean untouchable we're, right? we're, we're deep into you know imagination zone here right like yeah. i think you know whoever we are talking about is, is probably loved by their team. Uh, so we're just sort of, uh, you know, uh, imagining good things. Mm-hmm. Uh, Andy, do you have a guy? Uh, yeah. Like, I mean, what are we looking for here? Right. Like, I think like you're probably looking for like uh, just a classic, you know, facilitator to help Scotty, you know, Pascal is going to be one of your, probably your main guy to go to. 
So you're looking for somebody who can pass really well, obviously. And I mean, there's a ton of great assist guys at point guard in the league, obviously. But I mean, take a look at some of these more. Honestly, take a look at a little bit more of the more realistic uh, uh, options. And it gets kind of interesting. I mean, right, like staring at it right away, you see like there's Schroeder and then slightly above it. Fred Van Vliet. There he is. (laughs) Oh, Fred. oh, the guy we had. Uh, yeah, yeah. Seems to be doing better in exactly the categories we would like. Uh, you know, uh, so there's that, uh, which hurts. Um, but, you know, look up a little bit more, you know. Uh, uh, honestly, like Mike Conley over in, over in uh, Minnesota. Mm-hmm. I mean, not... the. I mean, again, we're looking more realistic here. Veteran presence, you know. Um, it's It's not completely unrealistic obviously but uh mm-hmm. but uh it's you know just just upgrading yeah mike mike conley's good conley's fine you know I mean, again i'm not like sort of pick for this if, if you want to go deep deep imagination zone and we're trying to avoid we're avoiding all stars i mean like i don't know i mean it's not that deep but like brogdon someone like that like maybe that's a little more of a realistic option i, as I well. thought about brogdon as well uh, you yeah. know he, he i think could be in the more realistic territory yeah same um, yeah, yeah. because i feel like portland obviously is going to sort of continue spinning assets um and you know you, you would imagine that brogdon's not a part of the long-term plan so yeah. um yeah, brogdon i think is a really very realistic guy you yeah. know, but you know, then it's like, are you giving up more picks? I think, but anyways, let's stay away from the realistic stuff. Yeah, we don't but, have to worry about the actual consequences or how no, we get them. Absolutely, let's just absolutely think about not. the player and how they would yeah. fit, right? You mm-hmm. know, yeah, yeah. So, uh, a guy I uh sort of I think we're all kind of starting with the guard here. Um, mine was, and I think he might have been a one time all star, so maybe I'm cheating here. Um, but uh, is D'Angelo Russell? Mm, uh, oh, I, yeah, yeah, yep. I think that he's just a like thinking about someone who it will just launch from three. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, he's, he's like, I'm just looking at the three pointers made and, you know, he's a top, uh, top 30 guy uh, on the yeah. season as far as uh, three pointers made on the year. So yeah, I'm sure he is, uh, you know, rough in a lot of categories, but just having someone uh, that can hit more threes than Schroeder, I think would be a big help. Um I'm sort of, you know, in the camp where since we're here, since we lost Fred, I would like to see, you know, Scotty and Pascal just handle the ball more. If there's mm-hmm. some scenarios where they have a tough time bringing it up, I don't mm-hmm. care. You know, I, I don't want to see, and I like Schroeder, but I don't want to see him dribble the ball a ton. Um, and then, you know, he's sort of settled. He had a hot start, but he's kind of settled to where he is, uh, you know, as a three-point shooter in his career. Which is not awful, but it's not it's not great, right? Mm-hmm. Um, okay, what 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 about Bigs? What about a Pirtle replacement? Is there anyone that jumps out to you guys? I think look at Team Canada. We got a guy right here, Olenek. Let's bring him in. You know, <laughs> he, let's get he, Kelly. He, he, I don't I don't even know if he's well. I guess he's like a very low level starter. I think Kelly would be awesome. Yeah, he's like, such you know, a like. We he's, need to look he, too far. He's yeah. He enhances every team he's on. Uh, he's such a like well-rounded player. I, I mean, Olenek is a great pick. Yeah, I mean, mm-hmm. he'll space it out for you a little bit. He'll, you know, he'll maybe might be a good one-two punch with with Yak. You know, who knows? You know, they they oh, they, you're, they you're might like listen, each other. keep Yak. <laughs> they could keep Pump him. Yak. <laughs> Pump Precious, get him out of there. No, Precious is gone. Yeah. I'm <gasps> bench. Yeah, like starters. Yeah, yeah. I've uh, I'm I'm losing my patience with precious a little bit here <laughs> <Good luck. laughs> yeah. I, I i have a thing that i like to say to myself which is the precious and true experience and it's like it, it varies from oh my god that was amazing i can see the vision to i cannot understand why you just did that like and, and it varies from game to game from like minute to minute from like offensive side to defensive side you know an incredible block that leads to dribbling down the court and then dribbling into a double team and turning it over (laughs) yeah it's it's, really tough with him (laughs) it's rough Mm -hmm. um i i love precious i still believe in him uh, only because i see how he has so much talent and i feel like it's a decision making and i'm like there has to be a click moment Mm. you have so much talent and you know i've seen players with that much talent where things never click but 
he's starting from a place that is so much like further along than, than a lot of players. Right. So I, I'm, but again, it's, it's a hope uh, and it certainly has not happened um, beyond that kind of like magical overachieving stretch in, in the, uh, uh, you know, two seasons ago where, you know, where it sort of culminated in the, the walk up three on uh, Embiid's head in mm-hmm. Philly. But um and which is also tougher when you feel like you're in this position where you're running out of time. And it's like, yeah, you're not actually exactly. running out of time. Like, okay, you're running out of time this season. Let's all remember there can only be one champion every year. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, and maybe this is just not your year. Oh, um, you but yeah, I think it's like things, but certainly like, not our year, but um, <laughs> right. But at the same time, you want to see where that development could be taking you. And when you don't have your own pick, and you have these expiring contracts, it becomes tougher to be like, to, to say, let's, let's, let's be patient with this guy. Unless that's the, the route you're taking. And then you're just, you know, deciding to play through the losses and, and figure out where you go. But in order to do that, I think we somehow have to get worse, which is the weird thing about this team. Yeah. It doesn't feel bad enough to just bottom out. You have to actually get rid of some of the good players you have and then have regret later. Like when you're like, you know who we could use? Fred Van Fleet. Mm. Like, <laughs> as if when we had him, he wasn't a player who could help us. And some of the people in the fan base last year were like, get this guy off my team. And now you're like, hmm, you know who we could use? Like, but, <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. And, and I'll also say, I think, I, I hate saying this, but I just, I just believe it too much to, to not repeat it. But I think that um, the idea that, that you know you you bottom out and and uh build around scotty and and you're not flirting with scotty leaving is Mm. is a very naive take especially as a toronto raptor fan you know i think that you want to be as good as you can as fast as you can with scotty yeah i don't sorry keep going no 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 i was just gonna say i i don't like the the um the point of view of like, Hey, we got our draft pick that works. Now let's build around them. It's like, if if that feels like you're shifting the years just off a little bit, you know what I mean? Cause not every guy is going to come in and be ready right away. You, you know, they're going to take some development time. I mean, even Scotty himself, as good as he was rookie Mm -hmm. of the year, we're seeing, you know, there's obviously parts of his game that he's improving on. He's becoming a, a, the, you know, a good player and all that kind of stuff, but it takes some time. Right. So if you, so, down the road if you're shifting there and maybe a couple of those guys don't work out the way you thought they were going to yeah like scotty's contract's up what are we doing here right like what's happening what's he going to be thinking i mean you know yeah if you you get a bunch of picks could could be grady could be malachi right (laughs) coloco and uh you know i think those are all different ranges sorry i I, i'm jumping in absolutely I, I i don't believe that any of those guys you know malachi is sort of okay um mm-hmm. grady is for sure i don't care coloco yeah hope, i hope it's okay but yeah, you know yeah hopefully. like i think to yeah anyways I'm just can we send someone to check on him like please <laughs> honestly i would like, like to know what's happening yeah well he's at the bench and he's like wearing cool hoodies so i'm like he's he's he he's must be fine. okay but <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah something, something like, there is going on which does hurt because i do think he has the potential to be that to be a good three and d guy i think he i we don't really know what his potential is because i haven't seen him play in so long yeah. But imagine if he's able to develop any kind of mid-range or long-range shot with his length. There's your center problem solved. I mean, not solved, but, you know, a big part of what you're doing mm-hmm. is you can now stretch people out and get a little bit more um, more spacing. But we don't know because we don't know. And for the record, I agree with you a million percent, Freddie. I think bottoming out... And trying to rely on a bunch of draft picks is not a win a winning sustaining system. And I think letting players know that your infam- that your emphasis is on winning through development is much more attractive to want to come and play than it is to just bottom out and oh you'll stay because we drafted you. Like you're not going to go anywhere. Why mm-hmm. would he? Why wouldn't he go somewhere else if yeah. we're just going to? You know. It's one thing. Listen, to Toronto t- fans, we just had the Otani experience. Yeah, <laughs> don't, don't forget. Okay. Yeah, free the free agent experience is not great here. But like, the, it's one thing to tank, and there's another thing to like target a year where you want to acquire a, a bunch of draft picks or a two year span or something like that, where you're acquiring draft picks for this time frame, 
and this is when we're going to make our push. That's I don't count that as a tank. That's more like planning and mm -hmm. managing assets and managing you know contracts in a way that makes sense. And and of course it like people call it tanking no matter what. But it's like but no, you put together a team that you know there's a smart way to do it basically and then there's like the the way where it's like we got scotty barnes we need a good pick next year tank trade everyone away go you know what i mean there's that like like fire sale aspect to it which i think is the mm -hmm. bad version and then the good version is like okay we are the oklahoma city thunder and we have a thousand draft picks because you know we took advantage of some things that were happening and we've been planning this for a long time and now we're really good you know although they they did the deep tank okc of course, and bought of course. It out. I, I think though what you're talking about to me is indiana Right. Yeah, they, maybe they, more so. Yes. They yeah. never fully tanked. They, you know, they traded Sabonis for Halliburton. It somehow was like one of these rare win win trades. Yeah. And then they have all these young guys who are looking great. Like they have mm -hmm. so, so, like a ton of good development. Um, and like didn't fully bottom out. Um, that was kind of Utah last year, but Utah looks worse. Um, like, but I think like I think you can bottom out without tanking. You know what I mean? Like you can just be the worst team in the league without you know, trying to be as sad as that is. But that can be like you know, hey, you know, we're not going to be, you know, we're we're in development. Whereas like tanking to me says like I'm trying to get this player in the draft. Like right. I'm doing this as a as a as a as a strategy to get this one guy, or maybe there's like two guys, you know, who you're happy mm -hmm. to get or whatever. But like, whereas just being the worst team during a span of you knowing you need to load up draft picks and you need to load up young players is like, that doesn't, to me, that's not really tanking. That's like, you're just bad. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to uh, sort of like circle back. I don't know if we picked bigs, but I don't mine... think you did. I pick, I picked Kelly, but I also want to put out Al Horford. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Al Horford. Sure. Honestly, hey, Al... Horford, you're about to maybe finally win a championship and that's all you really want. Yeah. Why don't you come over to, come on over to Toronto? Um, <laughs> My my guy is he's young and I think you know fits into the the timeline thing, uh, is uh, and I love saying his nickname Beef Stew, uh, yeah. Isaiah Stewart Detroit. Yeah. They have oh, about yeah. two hundred centers, uh, yeah. so I think they'd be willing to part with one potentially. Um, he can shoot the three. He's not amazing, yeah. uh, but he can shoot the three. Does shoot the three. Uh, I mean, he's is, shooting, uh, shooting 37 percent according to this and uh, yeah making, right making four you know shoot attempting four a game that's pretty good and like as bad as you know pascal's been from the three there's a difference between being bad at three and simply not taking threes which is what purtle does yes right mm -hmm. um is there is there a big that 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 you'd like uh, i gotta be happy? honest i don't have one I feel like every player that I was looking at, I was just like guards and scoring. <laughs> so I, yeah, I mean, that's fair. Do not that's have fair. one because that's just what I was looking at. When I look at, I, I know we're going to need bigs. I know we're going to need better rebounding, but I actually feel like we need better team rebounding and some of those long, um, like our long rebounds are garbage. You know what I mean? Right. Like that type of stuff I think we need. But yeah, everybody that I was looking at, whether it was like trade scenario or some of these big ones, were all guards. And I was like <laughs> looking at my list, and I'm like, either I don't know enough big men, or I'm just really guard heavy right now at like eight o'clock in the morning as I'm doing this research for this. Yeah. There, there's also not that many big options that are like mm. really, you know, it's a the, the league has kind of shifted away from that. Especially um, when you're talking about ones that could shoot. Like I'd love Jonas back, but how is Jonas is shooting? You know what I mean? Like. That's not really going to uh, two, three attempts per game, 35%. From right. Three. So not, not really you know. moving the needle. It's okay. Yeah. It's, it's okay. But yeah, exactly. I just want Jonas back. Cause I like Jonas and I've always, yeah. loved him. I, I <laughs> mean, him. I'd love to see the, 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 the slowest pump fake in the world again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. Let's uh, I think we sort of are flirting with this idea. So let's uh, let's move over to some NBA talk and, um, this is uh, this is where I, this is what I think some fans want, uh, which is the the deep tank. Uh, so we're gonna bring up um, uh, Detroit, uh, who now has twenty losses in a row, and um, uh, the Spurs uh, with Wembenyama first overall pick, seventeen losses in a row. Wemby, you're amazing, but the NBA is hard. Um, yeah, it it's, is. It's really hard. You need other players. And, um, you know, obviously it's not his fault. Um, I, I don't know if you're, you're more, uh, if you have more paid, but I think, you know, he has been dealt a tough hand as well. 
regardless, uh, these teams are entering historic territory. Uh, so um, you really are in the mix. You're in the top 30 losing streaks ever once you get to the 17 loss mark. Uh, so the last Spurs win uh, was November 5th. They're uh, 17 losses in a row. And the last Detroit win uh, was uh, October 30th. Uh, wow. So, so, wow. Yeah, yeah Detroit, Detroit is on the precipice of, um, you know, this is a top nine um, Holy. Uh, losing streak ever already. So their next major mark is uh, 23 losses, which would put them in the top seven uh, losing streaks of all time. So I wanted to, uh, you know, kind of bring up their schedules uh, with you guys. And, and uh, you know, you can pick either team. When is their next win? What, what is a, is there a game? Is there a okay. number that uh, I'll go, I'll go. Yeah. Whoever wants to go first. Okay. I see. I see that the Pistons are playing the jazz on the 21st of December. Mm-hmm. That seems okay. like a winnable game for them. I think sure. in between there, they've got some better teams. Um, yeah, it's like Philly, Philly, uh, Bucks. So. Bucks, yeah. Ooh. So I don't see that happening. Uh, the uh, Spurs are playing. Um, uh, they have Lakers uh, twice in a row, 13th, 15th. They got the Pelicans on the 17th. Who are sort of trending up. They are. They're playing well. So, like, uh, maybe, maybe they get the Bucks, and then they have the Bulls on the 21st The Bulls. As well. I was like, I think that, I think. But they could the, get this, they could get their first win on the same night, is what I'm yeah, saying. Right? Yeah, that's what, like, the 21st could be this historic day, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's the shortest day of the year. So, oh, you know wow. what I mean? So, so, so who would have, this. so if they all lost, <laughs> if they all lost up to that point, so, so. Uh, uh, San Antonio has three wins on the season. Detroit only has two. Yeah. So that'd be one, two, three, four more losses for San Antonio, and I which, think which will three put more them losses in the historic for, territory as well. Three more losses for the Pistons if they do that. Three more mm-hmm. losses for the Pistons, and that's the that's basically the main conversation of the NBA. Like that's yeah. going to take over the fun stuff, and people are going to be like, "Get your popcorn out." This team's about to lose. They play like, the Hawks know. on the 18th. The, Hawks, the Hawks, yeah, they yeah, can beat the Hawks. And I hate to say it, it's like, but if the Raptors were somewhere in this, <laughs> oh, oh, that's winnable. Complete wild card. That's a winnable <laughs> game. That's a winnable game <laughs> I mean, for them. No question. We barely about. beat the Spurs, right? I was gonna say we did. We had a tough time against the Spurs, and we were feeling great about that when we, we sure beat the Spurs. Were. OG be... shuts down Wembyama. We're just like yeah. Raptors are here, baby. Well, that was when I think that was like it was like two things were happening at the same time. One was. Nobody can stop Wembenyama, which yep. now we've learned so many people can stop Wembenyama. Yeah, quite um, and uh, or I mean, stop the Spurs. <laughs> and also at that time, it was kind of like um, it, it was this like incredible comeback. And now it's like, oh, we're actually that win is more of a footnote on for Spurs fans. Where if if this does get to more historic territory, they're gonna they're gonna look at that game. And it's like, that was the game we almost won, you know? <laughs> yes. I think I also well, again, saw that the good. Raptors and the Pistons, when I was looking at their schedule, have a game coming up. But so, yeah, the Raptors are. I, I yeah, really we do. hope that that's not the one. But if like, they <laughs> make the stream and they break it playing us, like that would be the one where it's like, okay, we're trading everyone. Yeah. This is it. Like, <laughs> they, just, they just lowered Dwayne Casey from the Raptors. <laughs> He that comes is... in like Sting, you know what I mean? Right? <laughs> oh my God, Casey! Oh God, he's got a baseball bat and oh trash and Why does he have a bat? Oh it's Otani on it. Crazy. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, Casey's gone nuts. Yeah, he's a yeah. Yeah, I, Casey I think... hit Darko with the bat. This is serious. <laughs> Rips off his thing. He's got. I a think pistons. it's going to be the Spurs getting their win first. But I, I think don't... so. Ah, I don't know. I don't know. And I mean, yeah. look, both of those franchises will probably feel however they're feeling about their future because they got their guys. But like, as you said, Freddie, like not necessarily the cautionary tale, but one of those ones to look at where you're like, oh, so you got your guy. Now you're going to be great, right? Like the road to rebuilding is long, man. Yeah. It's not, <laughs> I mean, if, you your Spurs, your if your Spurs are like, we're amazing, we've done this, we're patient. If you're the Pistons, you're like, our whole team's filled with like 
top picks. So yeah. mm -hmm. um, life just sucks, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, and 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 that's no knock on like Wemby's going to be great. Wemby's going to be great. They're going. Oh my god! And I think there. Cade's great. Yeah. And I think Cade's going. Cade's great as well too. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, yeah these guys will figure it out. It's pretty mm -hmm. young yeah. teams, obviously. Yeah, definitely not. Definitely not those particular players. Um, okay, let's uh, let's move on to here to the uh, in season tournament. Which, uh, you know, I think by all accounts was a success. Um, I I saw uh, I, I brought up D'Angelo Russell earlier, and I definitely thought that this was a there was a bigger potential for this. Uh, but they asked D'Angelo Russell, like, "What are you? Wow, five hundred thousand dollars. What are you going to do with this money?" And he was like, "That's two vacations for me," <laughs> which is an insane thing to say. Two um, vacations, like two vacations. It's like. I, I I don't even know like what's happening there, but um, yeah, I thought there was a chance, you know. Uh, and I brought this up a bunch, but you know, I cover the WNBA, and um, you know, I think the WNBA had a tough time marketing, uh, well, has a tough time marketing in general, but uh, you know, really had a tough time marketing the the Commissioner's Cup, which is the in season tournament, uh, which will be on uh, year three in the next W season. But, uh, yeah, they would ask players, you know, sort of like, oh, what do you think about the in-season tournament? And often there'd be a tone of like, oh, I, oh, I didn't realize that it was mm -hmm. happening. Um, and I thought that there was a big chance for this type of attitude, like, you know, that we saw from Russell. And there there wasn't. You know, we talked about uh, our last podcast, but, like, the marketing was, was on point. Like, oh, it was prop level, right? Like, everyone was like, this is amazing. And only positivity with the in-season tournament. And I think that's a big part of its success. And also, uh, could this be better for Adam Silver? You had this emerging superstar story with, with Halliburton in Indiana. And then you also have um, this, this veteran team with LeBron, like, like care so much about it. Like Anthony Davis, his intensity in that last game, this is, this is, so such a perfect kind of crescendo of events for for Adam Silver. Um, yeah, like I so I'll, I'll just throw to this and jump in whoever's ready. But um, is there anything you change? What would you change? Just sort of ideas on in season tournament. Okay, I have I have um, I have one thing that I would change. Sure. And I don't know if anyone's, I don't know if I've like come up with the brilliant thing or if somebody's already said this online and I just, you know, in mm -hmm. my sleep induced state, I was like, this would be the best idea. Yeah, no, plagiarism, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but there were people talking when I looked on, on some ESPN shows yesterday about like making like reporters being like the stake should mean more. It should have more meaning to what the games are. It should be worth a playoff spot. And I was thinking about if you were to guarantee a playoff spot for the teams that were in the play-in tournament. So that I sat down and I thought about how that could actually work. So okay. it would be, this is my crazy idea for what the play-in tournament could be in future years. The two finalists for the play-in tournament are guaranteed to be, or sorry, or for the in-season tournament are guaranteed a play-in game at the end of the season. Okay. Mm -hmm the winner of the in-season tournament gets home court advantage for that playing game. The loser only gets home court advantage if they're on the other conference. See what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So let's just say the Raptors and the Pacers make it. The Raptors win the in-season tournament and the Pacers are the runner up. Both of them now would play each other come that one game playoff. But if you're on the other side, then you automatically end up in the seventh seed. Okay. Right. If the in season tournament finalists are both for the same conference, yeah, so I already said that. If either or both of the uh, in season tournament winners place higher than seventh, then the spot is deferred by record, meaning they just take whatever position they have, six, one to six, and whoever is in that place within the standings now gets into the in season tournament. But it would make, I'm sorry, it gets into the playing game. But it would make the incentive be that regardless of your record. So you have an amazing start to the season. You win the in-season tournament. 
Now you have a playing game to prove whether or not you were actually a playoff team and whether or not you should actually be there. The tricky part would be is watching somebody with like a 20 win record who just mm-hmm. got really hot in the middle of the season all of a sudden find themselves in the conference final because they got hot at the right time. And yet at the same time, then it would make it important for players because they'd be like, I'm not letting this 20 win team beat me. Mm -hmm. Like we're getting that we're in the playoffs. We are a playoff team and you would have to take it seriously because it has real stakes at the end of the season. Uh, I, I love this. So um, the only person that I actually heard say kind of guaranteed playoff spot is actually before this whole tournament started, um, Tyrese Halliburton Mm. um, was the person who said it. And I'm with you. You know, I like all the mechanics of that. I think it adds actual stakes because anything that's sort of like draft picks, it's like players don't care about future draft picks. You know, they they care about that season. Um, And I really think that, you know, you could even do something, you know, sort of like you're saying, like, let's say there's like one team, like you're guaranteed a play in spot. Um, it kind of just gets bumped down the line. So the mm-hmm. Lakers win this year. They they finish fifth seed. Well, it's not them. Yeah. Um, uh, Indiana uh, gets into, they finish sixth. Well, it's not them either. Mm-hmm. And then you sort of just work it down the line where it's sort of like every aspect of this matters because eventually – you're going to find this team. Well, it's like, well, this team made it to the quarterfinals and point differential, whatever they get a chance because of how successful they were in this. So, yeah. um, And you still have to win during the playoffs, right? It's not that you get a free round. It's that now you have to, okay, you were great in that single little in tournament in the middle of the season. Great. Prove your worth again by beating this team in the play in and then see how far you go. And then who's going to, it just feels like a harder thing to debate when people are like, I can't believe this under 500 team is in the NBA finals. Well, they won the games they needed to. <laughs> yeah, That's why they're yeah. there. <clears throat> you know what I mean? And the other thing I would do is I would shift it by a month because I think, I, I think that the NBA might be afraid to um, go up against the NFL with their playoff schedule. Oh, they I'm are kind of like, they should like, I understand it, but I also think that if you have your product, like put put belief in your product because I feel like December is too soon. Like it, it just felt like it was too soon for me when they're talking about oh this is meant to beat the mid season um, doldrums and like it, it should be something that keeps people interested. I'm like the season just started. Like I'm here when I when I maybe start to lose a little interest is in January. So yeah, when teams lose hope. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. yeah and, and then if you use this format, you have the opportunity to regain hope because you're like, well, we haven't had a good start. But if we do this, we mm-hmm. can find a way into the playing game and you'll be talking all star. Right. So you have people like on all star game watch getting more opportunities for players to get more opportunities to have people watch them and be like, this is why you should be an all star. See what he did in the tournament in Vegas. And it's happening right close to when voting is happening for the all star game. That's true. You know, I, I got to say, like, with all the discussion that we've had on this show about the in-season tournament and all just in general, all basketball fans in general, I didn't know what the Raptors record was like a couple games into it. I was like, are, do we have a shot still? Like, are we still in this? Mm-hmm. I know we lost one of the games. Like, did we lost two. But like, like I, I wasn't really keeping track of it because it was kind of in this weird phase where we were where we were still just just like taking in the first you know month of games in the season or whatever and then there's that initial like start of the season excitement and then yeah now we're getting into like if it was starting up now it feels like it would be perfect you know and then we get into january like you said um i was i was all ready to be like actually and then you're like no that actually now i'm like no that that makes sense i think that would be good uh you know i mean you know playoffs whatever the nfl plays once a week twice a week whatever like like sun, sunday and monday like don't worry about it you know what i mean yeah. like they, they, they don't have games during the middle of the week and stuff we need we, sports fans need stuff to watch you know um uh i i have a rule uh no complaining about point differentials mm-hmm. i've had it I had it. I had it the second the second they started doing it. I'm like, oh, it's unsportsmanlike. It's not unsportsmanlike. The tournament has rules that makes it matter. It would be unsportsmanlike if it was during the regular season and it didn't matter. Yes, very unsportsmanlike. Do not do that. That's insulting. It's stupid. In a tournament when it specifically matters, your point differential. That is the opposite of unsportsmanlike. That is, 
I am being a good sportsman by doing the best for my team and giving my team a best shot. I'm sick of all the people c- complaining and was immediately about uh, about it being unsportsmanlike to run the score up because it's not in tournaments where it matters. It is during a regular season, but not when it matters. Every other sport has it too. Basketball, you're new. Get with it. You know? Facts. I love shoot, it. Shoot threes at the end. I love it. Um, <laughs> the, yeah, I'm, 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 you're I'm with you. up by 20? Shoot threes, man. Go. I'm also just like, uh, you know, I think that it's weird because, like, you know, you want respect, you want code for the game, you want those things to matter, right? Because they're passion. But I think once you get to a professional level, you know, no, no team that's playing San Antonio or or, or Detroit is is like, hey, let's take it easy on these guys. Yeah. yeah. Right? They're playing them and they're like, sweet. If we lose, we're having a players only meeting. So uh, <laughs> crush these guys. Yeah. yeah. Um, and I just think like for me, when it's professional, it's like you just play to the buzzer. You know, um, there is a certain kind of like, you know, if, if there wasn't the point differential thing, like I get, you know, I love that moment where, you know, PJ Tucker and, and DeRozan almost killed Lance Stevenson uh, <laughs> a bunch of years ago. Like that, you know, that's cool. Like code for the game stuff is fun. Like, listen, you know, oh, I meet you. I, listen, I love like, it. It's I love cool. It. Like, but um, that's exactly it. Like when it doesn't matter and people do it. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? Don't be, don't be a dickhead. But yeah. when it actually does matter, all this person is doing is trying to give their team a better shot. And it, and it does make a difference or it can at least make a difference. Uh, so here's, here's my, um, here's my, like, this is like really out there, but, uh, and I think the mechanics would be very complicated, but just go with me here. Mm -hmm. Um, incorporate the G league. So, uh, you want to see players who'd be pretty pumped about $500,000. They're, they're in the G league. Mm -hmm. Um, so, and also bigger tournament, bigger stakes. And yeah, we'll also get to see sort of these circumstances where, most of these G League players are going to get, like, the teams are going to get thumped, uh, you know. And I think an easy thing you could do is sort of you take the teams that are, um, you know, in the East and you put them in the West. Uh, so there's no sort of crossover where it's like Raptors versus Raptors 905. Mm. Uh, you also say that, you know, if you're a two-way player, like, you can't play in your, you know, you can't play for the big club. You have to play for the little club sort of thing. Um, so I are think you- that... Sorry. So are, are you saying that you take like two all-star G League teams basically and put them in? I, I'm saying 60 team tournament. <laughs> oh, you're <laughs> saying for the whole G League yeah, game. Yeah, man. For the um, whole team. Man. And, that's right. That's right. And it's like, because, okay, you're that's telling so me. That's so many more games. <laughs> right? Like, but, you can, but like Matthew said, you could, you could really sort of spread it out where it's sort of like you have these, you have these sort of big, um, <laughs> It's an insane this idea. It's insane. Okay? This okay. idea is, no, I, I literally, there. if I'm pitching this to Silver, someone's hit a button under the desk. Yeah. Already. Yeah. And <laughs> Security's I'm, on the way. I'm, I'm about to be escorted out. You know yeah. I mean? Yeah. The trap door is opening as you're saying 62. Yeah. yeah. yeah I'm a dead man. Um, yeah. But, but those, okay. So. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go finish. 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 Go, go. I was going to say, so like those games would be hilarious. It, like, first of all, you know, you're the Raptors or whatever. And you're like, we absolutely cannot lose to a G league team. Um, But also like, you know, you talk about these uh, like relegation is never going to happen, but I think a big part of Adam Silver's, you know, fascination and obsession with this tournament is that as the league grows, you know, there's this sort of plurality to basketball where it's like, it's becoming bigger in the globe and, you know, it's never going to be soccer, but I think, part of the interest here is, you know, you're incorporating more, you know, kind of, you know, soccer, right. You're incorporating these ideas in other leagues. Um, and one of the biggest excitements in those leagues is that if you're in the bottom, you know, um, like if you're, if you're Wrexham, right. Playing for, for Wales, there's a chance that you get to play Arsenal. You get to play Man U. There's a theoretical chance that you can work your way through this knockout tournament and it's this amazing thing for your franchise. So it would really, really help the G. I don't know how much it would help the NBA, but yeah. uh, it would be like, you know, it'd be huge, right? If you're in Mississauga and you're like, I think we're playing the Lakers tonight. Like, <laughs> like you know what I mean? Like, the Lakers, yeah. like, 
this that's, is why relegation would be so amazing and just be the funniest thing possible. Oh, I love Because I imagine love, like the Raptors being relegated or like, I don't know, the the uh they're they're good right now, so it wouldn't happen like right now, but the New York Knicks being relegated to the G League and a G League team coming up because they beat them yeah. in the in season tournament. <laughs> That would just be entertainment for entertainment's sake. And I would, yeah. Listen, I'm, I'm you want to stop tanking? You want to stop uh, tanking? Yeah. yeah Introduce relegation. It. You'll stop mm -hmm. pretty quick. I'm um, not a huge fan of relegation, to be honest. I don't love it as, like, I think what it does to the franchises that get relegated sometimes is, like, you can't come back from it. Like, it's like it's you just completely destroy yeah. franchises that <laughs> way. And, like, I, you'll never see it in North American sports, I don't think. Just the way we have it all laid out, this is never going to happen. We don't have a sport but, that's singularly that popular. Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Because then there's, like, imagine, imagine the Raptors got relegated. Like, they would... They, the fan base in Toronto is already like, hey, look, way better than where we were from a, a bunch of years ago, obviously. But like, this is a hockey city. It's impossible to get anyone to pay attention <laughs> yeah, to any other sport. Forget all. about if now the Raptors are in the G League. Like, it's over. And the Scarborough Stars. And, yeah, exactly. <laughs> TVL, man. <laughs> Jake Cole's like, okay, actually sure. made it. Yeah. What's that league? What's that like? That like semi-pro Canadian league where like the Niagara Falls Bulldogs and like you guys ever see that? It's like sometimes it's on CBC in the winter. Have you guys this ever seen a, that? Are you talking about the like the Canadian basketball league? Yeah, yeah, maybe that's it. Yeah, yeah. I don't. Um, I saw like one game once, and I was like, this is insane. This is wild. Niagara Falls Bulldogs. Um, I don't know if that's the actual name of the team. But that's like dogs. the type of names close, you're man. looking at. That's, uh, you know. Ice Dogs. The Ice Dogs. Um, former. Um, no, that's a sorry. Ice Dogs is a is a hockey. That's, a, that's an old hockey team. Yeah. yeah. Oh. Um, whatever. Some dogs. Um, but but bring them all in. You know, ninety yeah. team. You know, it's actually like a big like hundred and twenty team league and there's relegation. Yeah. And who yeah. Cares? Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls <laughs> casino. The Celtics dogs. are no longer in the NBA. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're relegated. One but, okay. You know, even if you're not doing that, uh, I think my my sort of backup G League thing is. You know, again, you're looking for all these ways to to showcase the G League. But like, what if the G League is also having an in season tournament, mm. and that's like the sort of like undercard for yeah. the in-season tournament. So you bring those four teams to Vegas and then that's like the warm up game, right? So it's like, you know, yeah. there's no games on the day. It's just like, you know, that that Saturday night uh Lakers uh Pacers game. What if there's like it was an earlier game, that's the two G League teams. Mm -hmm. Um I think that could be, you know, and big for the players too, right? Yeah. What about um, the sure. idea of sending in two All Star G League teams, or even one? I don't know. That throws a number yeah. off a bit, but like there are. The, I mean, that does happen at the NBA All Star game. Like yes. there is like an All Star, but um, yeah. I mean, but do like it throw again. them in the tournament, see how they do. They're gonna outperform some teams. You just know it, right? Like yeah, it's just gonna it's gonna happen. Anyways. Um. Okay. So uh, our our last uh, silly segment, uh, although I feel like that one got pretty good, um, <laughs> is uh uh. Matthew, you're an incredible actor. Uh, I've been lucky enough to see you perform live. And, um, you know, everyone, I, I hope, has that opportunity at some point. And, um, yeah, so this kind of got me thinking. I wanted to recast something with you. Uh, Andy, I know it has a deep reference base as well. So we're going to go with Frasier. Uh, and I want to recast Frasier with some NBA players, NBA personalities. Could be current. Could be old. Uh, I, I brought up the, or I think I sent you guys the, the Wikipedia or the, yeah, the, the, the Google search of, of the main Frasier characters. So yeah. Does anyone have a sort of jump out character? Um, you know, someone who, who could replace one of the, the main characters. I mean, at this point or side characters is it like LeBron is Frasier. Like, is he the main character of the NBA? Like, again, now? Like, can we say that again now? Or, or is there, a, do we, do we feel there's a different main character? You know uh, I mean? yeah, I think, like, you know, in LeBron season tournament he win, just, he, you know, he just seems too cool to be Frazier, but, um, 
He's but he's like you know he's he's been around. He was in the previous version of the league. You know, Fraser. Yeah, was, he's got uh, the long. In, he's got the Kelsey longevity. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like Fraser was, you know, that character was on Cheers. You know, it seems like LeBron has moved from this version of the league that we knew before to now been relevant the whole time. Uh, you know, obviously the the up there with the greatest, if not the actual greatest. But I don't know. if Fraser's the greatest. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's television crazy. character of all time, but he's, he's not honestly, quite, he's, got, he's sitcom wise, he's up there, man. But yeah, cheers. But he's not quite like goat character. That's sort of like a, like who's someone is a bit. More... It's like who's the but who's the main character? Who's who's well, got that like I'm the main character? Like like this guy walks in the Fraser has to be someone who's a bit like you know there's like a pompousness and he, and he and he gets embarrassed. Like LeBron sort of has this way of dodging embarrassment, you know. See, I was going to say Jokic, but Jokic only because <laughs> if he doesn't have enough. It wouldn't be Jokic because he doesn't have enough. Frazier doesn't have enough. I don't want to be here energy. Yeah, <laughs> Jokic exactly. has a little bit yeah. of that. Jokic which, is like, like the dog. <laughs> yeah, Jokic, Jokic is Eddie. Jokic is Eddie. Yes. Yeah, Jokic yeah. is absolutely well, Eddie. Just I was judging the say, hell out of everybody. <laughs> Jokic, Kel- Jokic, Jokic Frazier could be good if you're like, you have to wear the same size clothes that Kelsey Grammer wore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, well, yeah, Fraser always cares too much about stuff, right? Like, that's his thing. He's intense about everything. Like, mm-hmm. there's a there's a, there's an opera dinner uh, thing he has to go to, you know? It's like, oh, how will I ever, you know? Yeah. You know, I, I, I must wear my finest tuxedo Niles, you know? Yeah. Kevin Garnett? Oh, Okay. Yeah, <laughs> no, that's too angry. That's just like, yeah. Kevin and then like, is, is, is... Shea Gillis? Is Shea? He too, is he too charismatic? He's Shea? pretty cool. You should, yeah. Shea, um... I was gonna well, say okay. if, if KG is 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 Frazier, is Paul Pierce Niles? <laughs> like, that doesn't <laughs> work. That doesn't feel like that um, works to me. Well, I, uh, I had, I think Martin Crane... For me, jumped out as Jeff Van Gundy. <laughs> like, yeah, you, you know what I mean. Although Marty, I guess, is kind of cool, but um, I think it just I, I Jeff Van Gundy is a classic ranter. Like he likes to rant. Mm-hmm. So you know, Kermit you're right. Me. I was gonna say like Pat Riley or someone, but like Pat's too cool. Pat's you cool. know, Martin's not cool. He's he's he sits in his chair. You know, he watches you know the opposite of the shows Fraser watches. So yeah, 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 yeah. That that's. That one doesn't pan out. I mean, who's who's the like who's the like wise crack? Like, is Dylan Brooks Roz? <laughs> you know, like yeah, we have Roz with a quip, yeah. always got something to say. Frazier's yeah. foil, right? If he's LeBron, a, a little, little bit. bit of, you know? energy yeah, there, I see yeah. that. Yeah. Roz is a bit of a yeah. Roz is a troll, right? Yeah, a little um, bit. Yeah. I was gonna say uh, Bulldog is Bulldog Pat Bev, <laughs> but, but <Yeah>. maybe. <laughs> But yeah, like that's like because Bulldog's like, is he? I, I forget. I'm forgetting Frazier. I wouldn't consider Bulldog to be main cast, but like, he's, yeah, yeah, he's yeah, right yeah. The, you know? He's the sixth man. Like, let's be honest. Like, you got Frazier, Niles, uh, Marty, and you got Roz and Daphne, and then sixth man is is Bulldog or Eddie. <laughs> like, so who's who's the number one sixth man? You know, who's the guy who you can just and, yeah? Well, is is which coach? Because I feel like it's a coach for Martin. Yeah. Like yeah, it's yeah, gotta I be a coach. Like Tom Pop Thibodeau feels like the easy. Oh, maybe Tom Thibodeau. I was gonna say Pop feels like the easy. Oh, it's pick. Pop. It yeah. is. Yeah, it's Pop. It is Pop. <laughs> he's, he dis- he disciplined yes. the crowd. Like, what do you mean? Yeah. You know, yeah. he's it's a cop, pop. right? Yeah, he's yeah, a it's former pop. cop. Yeah, hundred percent. It's Pop. Done. Yeah, sealed deal here. Easy, easy. Um, for Daphne, I feel like you gotta go with. Like it's got to be an international player who sort of oh, like yeah. has a different type of energy, right? Like Luca. I, <laughs> Luca. I was gonna say Joe Ingles. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I like that you know, too. Someone who's like they got a different foot. Maybe Boris Dio. Like, like someone who's sort of like, you know, like they just have that European energy that's like different. You know. Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. European, like underappreciated by the rest of the league. That's Daphne. That's OG Ananobi. You know what I mean? You know what? I I think I providing think a lot of a lot of value to the show. Like absolutely it. one of the top, you know, in their field in the mm-hmm. what they do. Mm-hmm. And that's Daphne to me. Daphne is OG. Yeah. 
I'm, I'm, I'm. Who's down Niles? We have, we just haven't, we haven't even talked about it. who's a Niles. Yeah, Niles. Okay, so really neurotic, like mm-hmm. sort of constantly embarrassing themselves. Um, not likable. What? What do you mean? Niles well, I mean likeable. like funny, funny. Like as a what? As a watcher, it's likable, but like constantly, sort of... constantly, like uh, there's always something wrong. Like always something, oh, something wrong. Yeah. I got Anthony somebody. Davis is AD. Right? Oh, AD is good. AD is good. I like AD. It's not what I had in mind, but I like AD. Chris, Chris Paul. Paul yeah. Oh, Chris Paul's good. Yes. They're yeah, yeah, complaining yeah. all the time. Like, yeah. um... Kyrie. Oh, Kyrie. Milton percent Kyrie. Wow. <laughs> Just the conspiracy theorist won't get yeah. vaccinated. Yeah. Niles, like. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's like maybe like yeah, that's like you're throwing you like a Roseanne Barr type actor into the equation where it's like this show might be done by its third episode based on what Kyrie says. <laughs> but if you go back, like if it's like Cleveland era LeBron, like that kind of works, you know? Like he's the yeah. he's the he's the number two guy, sure. right? He comes in like you know, uh, like t- I telling got, him. I kind of <laughs> like Kyrie. Yeah, Kyrie oh. it makes sense to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. Kyrie's well, we've done it. Era LeBron really cared too. He was like yes. deeply, deeply caring. trying so hard for what we were looking for for Frazier as well. Oh, um, honestly, Kyrie. You know, like, <laughs> that's pretty good. Pressure. Just, just, just stand in line of the shoppers and get your vaccine. And you know what? Now I'm hearing LeBron singing like, "Hey, baby, I hear the hear music." The music yeah. all, yeah. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. and then wait, what the hell is the name of um? Niles is like wife you barely see. Um, oh yeah, what's her name? You never see. Like, do we see her in like two episodes? Maybe. Oh no, we... you never see her. No, you no, never no. Um, yeah. Uh, what's her? Uh, Maris. 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 That's Kawhi. You never That's see Kawhi, Maris. Right? <laughs> Kawhi is Maris. Yeah. For Kawhi, sure. Kawhi is Maris. Yes. Be... Yeah. Yeah. He's just always like, <laughs> like at her therapist drinking wine. Mm. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, always uh, having some huge problem with, I guess Kyrie in this in this uh, mm-hmm. in yeah in this version mm-hmm. yeah okay. And if we ever do sense. Inspector Gadget, Kawhi is also Mr. Claw. So it's the same. Uh, Doctor Claw. Doctor Claw. Oh, shit. You blew it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> All the Inspector doctor. Gadget fans out there are like, this guy thinks he knows Gadget. He's called the Mr. Claw. Forget it. Yeah. Uh, if you're an Inspector Gadget fan, come at me. Yeah, yeah. dude. <laughs> We're calling you out. Um, yeah. No bit. Cool. Well, uh, yeah, that, that brings us to the end of the pod. Uh, I think we uh, I think we did a pretty good job casting Frazier. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, Matthew, thanks so much for joining us. Um, let me, let me, yeah, let me throw to you for uh, for plugs. What, what do you got going on? What do you want to let people know? Yeah, thanks so much for having me, y'all. Um, right now... It's a little bit quiet, but uh, you can check me out in an episode of Fellow Travelers, which is uh, airing on Showtime and uh, Amazon right now. I'm in episode two really briefly, uh, and that show just got nominated for um, for a Golden Globe, which is pretty dope and pretty crazy. Wow, congratulations. Um, yeah, again, very small part. I cannot take a big share <laughs> in that at all, but I was in it, so I'm going to take a little bit. Um, and for any other updates, you can follow me at uh, on any of my social medias. They are Instagram, TikTok, and the handle is it's Mr. MGB, spelt I T S M R M G B. It's Mr. MGB. Awesome. And um, fellow travelers is on Showtime. Yes, Showtime, and I think believe it's also streaming on Amazon. Cool, mm-hmm. uh, amazing. Well, yeah. Thank you so much for joining us, and. Um, I'll say to everyone, thanks for listening and, you know, subscribe to Raptors Republic, subscribe to the Raptors Republic YouTube page and keep supporting us and appreciate it. Andy, you got anything? Nope. That's everything. Hell yeah. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.